Oh, it's good. Yes. <laughs> she bounced. We're back. <laughs> With another episode of Project Exoset. Where, so, uh, where do we get done tonight? We got the wheels on. It's on the ground. It's on the ground? I mean, wiggle that wheel. Yep. Watch the wheels. She steers. So we can go. Ba, da, 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 da. All, all that opposite yep. lock yep. input on there. This steering looks a little bent. Yeah, it's a little oh, bent. Oh man, that's real bent. We're gonna have to put a suede wheel on there anyway. Yeah, this I thing, like this thing, wheel. and get rid of that red hub. <laughs> yep, to match the uh, suede Sparco sprints we got for this thing too. They're just a good low seat FIA. These are nice. Yeah. I like the, I'm actually, what are, these are pretty cheap too. Yeah, they're cheap. We didn't pay much for them. No, they're, they're, they're a good price, good bang for your buck. A lot of, if any of you guys want to set, hit us up, we deal yeah. them. Yeah, get you a good deal. Anyways, so we wanted to take tonight to go over the entire suspension setup for our Project Exoset and talk about what's different, what makes us special, why we're doing this. I, mean, I don't know why we're doing this, but like, why we're doing this. Yeah. Who made this kit? Paco Motorsports. Yep. They, so, this is their rally. Yep. Rally cross. Kit. Rally cross suspension kit made for a Miata or so an Exoset. It's long travel. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll we'll talk about everything a little bit more in detail. The wheels and tires are from our good friends at Youngblood. I hope Just I'm, the wheels. I'm sorry, the wheels. Yep. Youngblood. Youngblood. Yep. They, um, uh, this is their spec Miata. 15 by seven with a 25. Plus 25 offset, yeah. And then for the tires, I don't remember what we picked here. This is a Kenny they're recommendation. Accelera rally cross tires. That's right, they're stiff and they're heavy yep. because they're they got steel heavy. belts in them for reinforcements. We're gonna have a separate set of wheels and tires when we actually wanna do like pavement stuff with this thing. Yep. Um, we just thought it'd be kind of cool to have like a rally cross wheel and tire setup. And we're definitely gonna try and do some events in this thing. I've never rally crossed before. I did it a couple times way back when I was a young buck. Yeah, it's like a mix of pavement and and gravel. And the one I did was dirt. all all off road, all, all off road. All dirt. Dirt. Yeah, we blew. I, I got three runs in before we ripped an axle out of the transmission. It wasn't me. I wasn't driving. I just so. love that episode of the Top Gear where the, the three guys they get the they get rally cross cars and they just race and. Yeah, it's just super. It's, it was super exciting. We kind of like, applied the supermoto yeah. philosophy to this. Yeah. So light, lightweight, long travel suspension, like hopefully can hop some curbs and do knucklehead stuff on the street. Um, all the bushings are now energy suspension poly. We didn't put the sway bars on yet, but we're gonna start with factory sway bars and just flying me out of end links. Yeah, we spoke with Paco Motorsports. It was Mark, right, at Paco Motorsports? Yeah. Um, he recommended the stock sway bars to start because of the uh, the long travel. Yep. Um, just having them a little bit softer would probably help. We want more sway to like allow the travel yeah. to hit its full range of motion. Plus, I think it's going to be hilarious on track too. How much with it sways? Yeah, it's going to be kind of like a little mini trophy truck in a, yeah. in a sense. Um, and then these are the Goodwin Racing motor mounts. Not that that's suspension, but just yeah. while we're talking about this stuff. So, all right, let's go back to the Paco okay, and we'll talk about it a little bit more in detail. Brother, yep. why don't you come over here and let's get some close-up shots of this. So, Matthew, yep. tell, tell me a little bit about it. All right, so um, these are not Miata coilovers at all. They're, they're, they were actually specifically picked out by Paco Motorsports for their long travel kit. Uh, they, they Usually Paco Motorsports, they have like a three inch lift kit for a Miata, which basically just moves the mounting point up. These are completely different. These are designed around the Miata coil or the Miata control arms yep. to uh, for the maximum amount of travel. Um, and that's the most travel that you can get with the stock A arms. Yes, they, they do sell a kit that's like balls to the wall, like has replacement control arms that, that bring everything out and you know, you get a lot more travel that way. Yep. Um, they do supply you with upper mounts. Um, this is basically just a, I, I don't know if it's like a universal Coney shock or if it was, you know, basically the best one that for- It's not, for a, this, it's not a standard Miata it's, shock. It, it's not a Miata shock, no. but, but um, the, the engineering that I like all is, is all in the back that I think is really cool. Um, I don't know if we want to show any more. Well, front. before we go back to, um, who makes the ball joints, I forget. Oh, the ball joints are made by Bauer. They're uh, extended lower ball joints so that you can uh, you can get some more negative camber in the front. Yep. It just okay. basically swings the knuckle out a little bit. Um, All right, rear. So the biggest problem with the Miata is rear suspension travel. 
Look, um, how, look at how high that shock is yeah. up in there. Um, I feel like Paco Motorsports has uh, resolved this problem. <laughs> yeah. By uh, basically inverting the shock, uh, mounting it way up here, you get uh, effectively a lot more suspension travel. That is clever how, the, how they added that adapter and they flipped the shock upside down to do that. Yeah. Do you remember who makes the springs? Uh, I Hyperco. Hyperco. And these are progressive spring that are yeah, on here. Yeah, progressive spring rate, so they should be pretty plush. So for those of you who don't know, progressive ha are usually, you can usually identify a progressive spring by the tighter wound coils. And in this case, yep. the tighter ones are at the top and, the, and the, the other ones are at the bottom. Yep, so these are different spring rates on the top and the bottom. So what progressive means is that the spring rates progressively get stiffer as you load the suspension up and put weight onto the corner. So as the spring compresses, the spring rate goes up. Now, for most performance driving, and most coilovers have linear springs. Mm -hmm. So it's the same, same spring, spring rate, rate yeah. all the time. Now, when do you want progressive versus linear? Progressive is more for comfort. So a lot of lowering spring kits for cars that are meant for stock shocks are progressive. It's, it, it, it lessens the, the load on the shock. So when you're um, just cruising around. When you're cruising it's, around, it's soft and spring. it's really only stiffening the spring rate when you're cornering, yeah. but having the spring rate change can lead to less predictable handling and the car doing a little bit more wonky stuff when you're trying to do knucklehead things. Yeah. Or like it just as the car approaches its limit, like it just, it just it's different because the spring rate loads Transitions, up. Transitions, yes. yes. Yeah. So I personally, for, for most performance driving out of a sports car, like a linear spring. And again, most coilovers are, are linear springs in them with the exception of like BMW Bilsteins, those are actually progressive. The PSS 10s, oh, yeah. that's a high-end Bilstein or Stein, whatever, and uh, there are progressive springs. But it's something I might end up changing in the future because it is, it is, I can feel it on track, how it's a little bit less predictable. But anyway, so that's, that's, that's coilover springs in a, or just suspension springs in a quick recap. Yeah. So, sorry, Matt, you go ahead. Uh, I don't, I think I didn't have much else for this. Oh, that's it, we were just talking about the long travel? Yep. But, oh, anyway, so the, the progressive spring rates with this setup should actually be fairly compliant for street driving over bumps. Um, and also they picked the spring rate for Miata weight too. So I'm wondering how the lightness of the Exoset will, uh, will affect that spring rate as well. So when it comes to spring rates, you typically want stiffer for the more weight they have to carry with the car. Mm -hmm. um, a car that's this light doesn't need a very stiff spring. Yep. So, so I mean, maybe that'll better, have better track. It may be too stiff. Characteristics, yeah. But like, what are we gonna do? I mean, couple custom springs, I guess, would be the, the solution, yeah. but I think it's gonna be plenty fine. We'll see, I, I think it'll be enough too, because a lot of Exoset guys run higher spring rates than what these are. Oh, so then we should, yeah. we should definitely be good. And we're gonna, we'll, we'll probably be around, what, 1,500 pounds when we're said and done, curb weight? Uh, 15 to 1,550, somewhere around there, I'm guessing. Yep. Rudd's about 1,450. Okay. And we, but we have a cage. Yeah, um, we, did, we did add the cage, which is probably like a good 75 pounds, maybe. Yeah. Or 50, uh, that's probably about like 40 to Who welded pounds. that cage in? Our good friend Derek, yeah. the defensive octopus on Instagram. Like, he did a great job. He does, like, this was only like his second cage that he did. He's, a, he's just a great fabricator. He did a, he did a, f a phenomenal job on this cage. It's like, I've, I've tried to look for angles where it's like not symmetrical, but I can't find any. It's Derek, literally Derek perfect. is a fantastic fabricator yeah. Yeah. and um, he's in Connecticut. Yeah. Look him up on TDO for performance.com. Yep. He's really good. He makes manifolds like for, for Miata. He made well. Matthew's turbo manifold. Yep. My turbo manifold. Hit him up. He's a good guy. I know he does fantastic work. Yep. Um, trying to think what else we have on here. I think that's it. Yeah, I mean, what do we got next? We gotta, start, we gotta mount up the radiator, we gotta do... Yeah, we're gonna start animal. working on the engine bay, but from here, I, we just want to talk about the suspension tonight. Yeah. That's it's, where we're it's, at. It's but really it rolls. Good. We're gonna push this thing back over into a yep. spot and then I can start getting stuff in and out of my garage again, <laughs> which will be... Oh, you wanna, you wanna drive things? You know, maybe. Yeah. Just motorcycles, my <laughs> brother says, but yeah. I'd like to drive some stuff soon. Yep. The weather's getting warmer finally. Yes. That's it. Yeah, that's it. This is a short one, but that's the suspension setup on Project Exoset. Thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you to all the people who are helping this build come together. Paco Motorsports, Youngblood, Young uh, Derek, Derek, the Defensive yeah. Octopus, TDO, and am I missing somebody? I'm, it's getting late, I'm getting yeah, tired. We're tired. If we did, we'll, we'll put it in the description. 
Yeah. So that's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you in the next episode. Done.